Hello guys, welcome to Expert Tracer Academy. Today we're going to see how to create a profile and then a profile view. So that's what we're going to see. So gets, let's get started. So why do we need a profile? So in a nutshell, if you're going to create a corridor or any of those uh, intelligent objects, um, so you might need a profile. So why do we need a profile? So in typical design softwares, they generally give you a 3D line in which you can control how your corridor or your road it has to travel from the plan view as well as from the side elevation, how it has to go up and downs and things like that. So whereas with Civil 3D, your horizontal control is done by the alignment, is taken care by the alignment and your vertical control is taken care by the profile. So you need both of that to control your um your corridors so that's a basic element and then on top of it if you want to create sections and a lot of these things uh, you still need your uh, alignment okay so now let's go ahead and create an alignment first so we have already seen creating an alignment using alignment creation tools and then best fit creation all that so let's go and create using polyline so now i'm going to create a polyline command and then create a polyline and then i'm going to convert this polyline into an alignment i'm going to alignments and then click on create alignments from object select the polyline press enter and then it shows the direction so that means the changes will start zero from here and then it goes all the way through this way uh, can reverse it you can click on reverse to reverse it if you're happy you can click ok and then you can give some meaningful name so I'm gonna say this is gonna be road 1 uh, m1 road project and um, so this is gonna be between section 8 kilometers to uh, 23 kilometers you can write some descriptions as well and then you can choose to put into a site uh, we have already seen a separate video on what is sites uh, you can refer to it so it's like a bucket to make sure that your design objects are interacting between them uh, and then um, your style for your alignment you want a line weight or without line weight and however you want to do it and then your uh, alignment label set uh, so you can have multiple label sets together you can even create your own label sets and then the curves so what is the default radius for your curves you can keep it small so you can have small tighter curves and uh, if you want bit wider curves you can specify what is the minimum radius you want to have and erase the existing entity that will delete this polyline after the alignment is created then the design criteria do you want to apply design criteria to it um, so I think we already seen this one in a separate lesson so um, uh, so this is basically if you want to apply some design speed to it, so so Civil 3D will check uh, if a vehicle is traveling at let's say some uh, particular speed onto a curve. Um, so then what is the super elevation that we need to have uh, to make sure that the vehicle doesn't run off the shoulders. Okay, so once you're happy, click OK, and that creates the alignment. So it has got tangent curves tangent, and um, so yeah once you're happy and uh, so the alignment is all ready so next is we're going to create a profile so this is going to be surface profile so we're going to integrate the surface data and then this alignment together to create a profile okay and then it's going to be create surface profile you're going to choose your alignment and this is going to be this one and uh, the surface and then click on next so this is the uh, the sample changes so that is all okay and then click on draw in profile view if you click on ok it will create a profile but not the profile view in civil 3d moment you you know you cross your alignment then it's like a next step in your learning curve so the object starts becoming little different and the way they work is little different so from this point onwards when you're creating a profile um, so the profile is actually the profile line uh, that says like on this particular line how your uh, have your tin model is so that is your profile so the profile view is a sort of like graph it's a representation of this profile so the the profile view as such doesn't have any data associated with that the profile is the actual data line okay so if you if you click on ok the profile is created but you will not be able to see it on the screen so it is actually created and the data is associated with the ddbg file but you will not be able to see this graph okay so for that if you click on this button here draw in profile view it is same as this okay but again it will fire the next window where you can choose options to create your profile view so I'm going to click on draw in profile view so you can give it a name if you want it choose the alignment choose the exaggeration how how tall the graphs has to be and all that 
click on next and your chain is um, so that's your starting zero chain age and then that's your ending chain age for an example and then do you want to go through and create a profile for the entire length or for a specific segment and then the profile view this if you set to automatic this actually takes it from the surface so how tall the surface climbs how deeper the surface grows uh, so the curves uh, will actually go up and down so if you limit it so it will truncate it so click on next next and then the type of bands it. so this is the data line data that you see under the graph which you can keep it under or above so using this option and then the type of bands that what you wanted uh, you can choose from this list so is it for roads pipes and uh, geometry data whatever you want to have you can have it you can even customize it click on next and this is the hatch for the cut area the fill area uh, if you got boundaries so it can create all that and then once you're happy click on create profile view so where do you place your profile view so remember when we did tables i've asked you to place the tables right up here the reason being is when the table uh, let's say if you got 50 rows for now and if you're adding another let's say 200 rows the table is going to create stacks and then it's going to create more rows underneath so if you keep it on the top left corner so it is going to be top of your model at one point so that is why i asked you to place the tables right up here so whereas for the profile view it grows in this direction so that means from here so it will grow in this direction so if you keep it in this section in this place so sometimes your profiles might be on top of your model then you have to move it so it's best to actually keep it on the top right corner and your profile is created let's take a look at the profile so now if you look at it there are two elements in this one so sorry three elements in this one so one is the profile view and the next one is the profile and then next is all your annotations which is let's say if you've got labels there will be labels your bands and all these elements are there okay so the profile view if you select it that's a grid lines if you select it it tells selects a profile view and you can say in the top it says profile view and then you can see a whole bunch of items here where you can go and edit your profile view so if you select if you want to select your profile so you select these lines and then that is your profile it shows you that's your natural surface profile okay and this is your bands so your bands will have design levels existing levels and um, and depth and then changes okay so that's the uh, profile and the uh, alignment so if you select your alignment and then uh, if you move your alignment your profile will automatically update okay so they're all linked together and they will update in real time all right thanks for watching guys we'll see a couple of more videos on profiles and uh, we'll take it from there thank you so much